Hello and welcome to Study IQ, my dear friends. I am Prashant Mawani. I hope you are learning good today. I have two special topics for you guys. The first one is about artificial intelligence. Yesterday we were talking about uh, Industrial Revolution 4.0, and today we are going to talk about artificial intelligence. So it is going to be a sort of add-on. I have a very interesting story uh, from Austria regarding artificial intelligence. We are going to go through the world's first uh, recorded uh, intelligent, or you can say, automatic machine. And the second topic is about India's contribution in World War One. Now, before moving on to our special topic, I would like to introduce all of you to our pen drive and tablet courses, which are available for various different exams. To find out more about it, do check out studyaq.com. If you have any questions or queries, you can feel free and give us a call on the numbers that you can see on your screen. Now, there was a person called uh, Wolfgang von Kempelen, and he invented uh, this uh, world's first intelligent machine, in 1770 this machine was uh, a chess player so basically it was a machine that you can play chess with and automatically this machine will play chess with you and this machine was so smart that it has pay attention here consistently right this is the word here consistently beaten you know it was it was beating so many players and not just common players some of the best minds or some of the best hands uh, which chess at that point of time were beaten by this machine called the Turk. I'm sure you all are curious like how this uh, Turk would look like. So here it is uh, in front of your screen. Uh, this is a, a replica of uh, Turk and uh, uh, the king of uh, this uh, uh, Schoenbrunn Palace uh, that's in Austria. So the king of Austria was so impressed uh, and he took it as a pride of his uh, of his state so he asked you know this uh, this wolfgang the person he was in fact forced by the king to take this machine uh, to various different parts of europe and display it and uh, he also insisted him that uh, you know that uh, this best chess players of famous people should also try this machine so uh, finally, this uh, Wolfgang uh, takes this machine to various different parts of Europe and you won't believe that Benjamin Franklin, uh, the Napoleon Bonaparte, and at that point of time there was a very famous person called uh, Franco Andre Philidor. Uh, he as well played with this machine. Now, Franco, uh, this uh, uh, Philidor, he won. Of course, he was one of the best chess player of the time and uh, the name was given Turk because it was believed at that point of time that uh, this game of chess was in, uh, was invented in Turkey, but actually it is from India, as I'm, I'm sure we all are aware about this thing. So, anyways, so this uh, man here, this uh, Philido, uh, had a game uh, with uh, this uh, machine and uh, as per Philido's son, it was one of the most exhausting game of chess his father had ever played and uh, yes finally uh, Philidor was victorious but uh, still it was not that easy victory for Philidor so you can I'm sure we all are impressed by the story that uh, this person here uh, this uh, Wolfgang uh, von uh, Kempelen should be considered as a father of artificial intelligence isn't it but no it's not over yet in 1854 the Turk was destroyed in a fire, taking its secrets with it forever. But not forever. It was later on, you know, there were a few curious people who uh, went through this, uh, who came across this story and they did a sort of uh, scientific research and things on this particular machine and they realized and it was finally revealed that it was a sort of trick. It was a hoax, right? Uh, there was, in fact, a person that was uh, hidden inside one of the compartment that was there, designed in such a way that uh, if you open the doors as well, you will feel that you will, you know, you cannot find it. There, It, it was, of course, a secret compartment uh, inside this, uh, this big box. Uh, so, it was a trick, right? Uh, that uh, was, uh, means this person was a I would say he was conning <laughs> various different uh, people, this Wolfgang von Kempelen. But today's artificial intelligence is not about conning, it's not a hoax, it's something that is reality. Look at our life. Uh, we know that uh, so many things that we do today, they have a touch of artificial intelligence. I'm not saying that uh, today's world is completely 
dependent on artificial intelligence but we like to uh, see a little bit of things you know those things that we do by ourselves if artificial intelligence can automatically do it for us then that would be a good thing is isn't it uh, we have seen that introduction of mobile phone now each and every one of us we have uh, most of us are using smartphones and smartphones are uh, not something that are out of reach of poor people as well so everyone basically you know smartphone this technology is so uh, you can say cheap at present that everyone can afford it and that's the beauty of uh, technology that it should be that's how it should be right uh, everyone should be able to enjoy uh, the benefits of technology and when each and everyone starts using technology then it becomes you know the whole we can see a sort of upliftment of whole society economical upliftment societal upliftment and so many other things of course uh, these are all common things i'm i'm sure we all are aware about this thing now the thing is artificial intelligence the big question that we need to ask or the reason why we are discussing uh, this today's topic is because i want you to understand one thing i want you to understand that where exactly we have to ask this question where do we stand right what's our position uh, or the face right when we talk about artificial is artificial intelligence so we are not completely dependent on artificial intelligence it is still growing and there are so many things i'll give you just one example i'm sure we are aware about this thing that uh, an airplane can take off as well as it can land all by itself uh, without any interference or without any help of a pilot but then as well we are using pilot just to make sure that you know we have this as a travelers uh, as a passenger we have this uh, sense of security when you have someone behind a joystick uh, of course you don't have a wheel so i would rather use a word a joystick there is a thing called something like joystick um, in a cabin of an aeroplane uh, that helps a pilot latest planes they have a joystick sort of things so we have pilots uh, just in case you know for emergencies or in case if anything goes wrong then uh, you know we have someone who is uh, able to take control uh, if something goes wrong then we can take control and this something goes wrong just in case all these things are no small things uh, these things are you know big things uh, if you if you look at it scientifically then still we can we can get one message out of it that still this thing is evolving it's not completely evolved yet now there are a few industries like uh, who would imagine that legal industry as well is using artificial intelligence not in our country uh, but uh, all these softwares and this artificial intelligence technologies are more found in western world uh, in America, in some European countries, they, their attorneys, their lawyers, their solicitors, they have this sort of, uh, uh, what do we say, uh, softwares. Uh, if you feed a case in that software, then that software will bring you or it will display or it will present uh, some, you know, logical points as well as past cases and laws associated with it. And that's not uh, just that. It will also provide you some uh, some arguments uh, that you can present in in the court of law. So that's that's the touch of artificial intelligence. But there is a limitation with artificial intelligence. And uh, one more thing that I would like to add here: the solicitors and these lawyers basically they can they can design uh, you can say complicated uh, you know some complex contracts uh, can also be uh, can also be designed uh, for for specific or customized requirement. Of clients so that's the beauty of this artificial intelligence that is being used by uh, this uh, some lawyers in this uh, legal industry but one thing that we have to keep in mind is that artificial intelligence is only as good as the data sets it is trained on so we have to you know continuously train this thing so this is this thing is still you know it's under training process it's an expensive process and uh, there are a few you know there was a time when a uh, few items like medical profession in few countries a uh, few things were totally you know run by artificial intelligence but there were a few errors like i'll give you one example of uh, automatic cars when i'm saying automatic i mean to say this auto driving cars so consistent failures in this uh, few trials and other things uh, has reverted the situation so now human beings are again you know human beings are working as a finally quality controller 
Uh, so in medical profession, you have these algorithms and other things. Uh, there are companies using algorithms that process medical scans to determine whether a tissue or a blood sample is uh, malignant or not. And uh, this thing is finally checked by a radiologist as well. So a sort of human touch is important at present. I'm not sure about future. Uh, I think in future... Uh, we will have artificial intelligence to check uh, processes by artificial intelligence. We may have uh, artificial intelligence to train uh, other artificial intelligence because, you know, you have to consistently, you have to train this machine. It has to learn things and uh, human or our life is not that simple. It, you, life has no rules, isn't it? Uh, it goes. It will take you through various different adventures, ups and downs. few things that we have never thought of uh, will uh, be our reality tomorrow who knows so we have to train artificial intelligence and uh, it's a costly exercise uh, so at present uh, in a nutshell right uh, to conclude this discussion i would say that uh, or if someone asks you this thing or if you are if you find a question regarding it or if you are part of a discussion regarding it uh, then our proper stage at present we are in this stage of hybrid artificial intelligence right that's what our proper phase is gradually we are moving towards this side where more things will be executed by by machines uh, but at present still the final control is of human beings and we have to stay there we have to work as as, as, as i told you as a, a final you can say quality checker um, still we are performing so we are uh, in this hybrid uh, phase of hybrid artificial we are in this phase of hybrid artificial intelligence so i hope things are clear to you now uh, in fact i have one more topic for you guys uh, if you talk about special topic it's about india and vietnam's relationship uh, there are so many things that we need to we can learn from and we have to learn from this particular topic because it's very important uh, see first of all let's locate vietnam the reason why vietnam is in news today is our president ramnath kovinji is in vietnam as we are speaking and uh, he is here vietnam is this country over here it's part of asean let me zoom it up for you guys a little bit as you can see here this is many regular students you have to be aware about this thing that this portion is south china sea now let me zoom it up a little bit for you guys so here you have a proper map of vietnam capital is hanoi a red river passes through this uh, hanoi and you can also find one important uh, river called Mekong. It uh, originates from Tibet that is in China and then it passes through various different ASEAN countries and the mouth of this uh, uh, Tibet, uh, beg your pardon, mouth of this Mekong River or this Mekong Delta is here and the mouth is here as well in South China Sea. Now South China Sea is a disputed uh, water body. China has uh, claimed that uh, this South China Sea belongs to China and there are other tenders right uh, there are other countries and vietnam is one of the country that is having this border issue with china now we have talked about this thing to china is trying to penetrate in this part of the world and we are not just uh, you know uh, uh, skiving we are also doing our we are also playing our cards we are also uh, uh, developing our relationship and we are also penetrating in south china sea and other portions where we can create a little bit of pressure on china as well so i'm just giving you you know a little bit of uh, why this topic is important so this is one angle that you need to look at of course you don't find this sort of things in pib uh, right if you don't find this sort of official statements coming from presidents and other people but these are things that you have to read between the lines now hanoi is its capital our president is on a two nations visit. The first nation is Vietnam. The second one is Australia. So when we'll talk about Australia, when our president will be or will be in Australia at that point of time, we'll talk about Australia as well. Now, president said that India and Vietnam are old civilizations. There is a thing that is connecting these two countries uh, that is uh, working as a link between these two countries, old link, as well as uh, this old link has survived uh, all these ups and downs. Uh, so we'll talk about it if you look at bilateral trade then back in 2010 it was just a 3.7 billion dollar at present it is 12.8 billion dollar which is not bad and we are still you know our target is 15 billion dollar by 2020 which i believe we will be able to achieve it's very interesting to note that one portion of uh, vietnam is uh, sharing its border with uh, 
a water body the other portion is uh, sharing its complete portion with a land body so that's a very interesting geography and uh, vietnam and india we have business relationship as well but uh, before i take you through the uh, take you through uh, to this uh, business relationship uh, of course one thing that is quite visible is uh, lord buddha right on your screen and buddhism is a link that is connecting both these countries right uh, since uh, historical uh, you can say since olden days vietnam india business relationship we are working on financial services we are partners in financial services in information technology uh, digital economy hydrocarbons this is a very interesting point here hydrocarbons defense uh, we are doing joint military exercise i think a couple of days ago we were talking about this thing and when we talk about hydrocarbons so our ongc's uh, videsh limited or this foreign branch of o NGC is working in partnership with uh, Vietnam's company uh, to explore oil in South China Sea and this is a sort of a pinch uh, you know it's uh, irritating for China so that's a bit of interesting thing this this is a reason why I said that this is interesting thing so hydrocarbons then we have defense renewable energy mining healthcare uh, tourism civil aviation and other sectors as well on your screen you have this my son uh, temple uh, this temple is located in uh, vietnam of course and it is a unesco world heritage site and archaeological survey of india is uh, helping vietnam to res uh, to restore uh, this uh, beauty of this uh, world a heritage site so that again is a very important thing cultural uh, tie up between india and vietnam now uh, moving on to next topic coming from a vice president of our country and a very interesting statement he has said here uh, mahatma gandhi is one of the greatest revolutionaries the world has ever seen now this is a very interesting statement because generally what we believe or what we think is uh, when someone is using, uh, I would not say violence, but I would say uh, force or uh, required or necessary force for freedom or to put across his or her idea, then we call them revolutionary, isn't it? Now, I'm not saying revolutionaries are bad people. They are uh, as patriot as you and I, and they are as patriot, like say, for example, Bhagat Singh and other people are considered other leaders are considered as revolutionaries but at the same time if you if you uh, if you understand see their actions are more visible thing but there are a few subtle things that we cannot to see but they are there and one of the most important thing is their ideology the thinking process you know the, the subtle thing their mentality and gandhiji his ideas are even you know they are going on even today they are applicable in today's world as well his teaching remains as fresh as it used to be and or as it was and uh, you know cleanliness uh, not being afraid of things uh, this is one of the most uh, beautiful quality about gandhiji he was i would say he was one of the most uh, a fearless uh, person at that point of time or uh, if we if you go and understand gandhiji then you find that he was uh, fearless because he was uh, for uh, for truth when you are with uh, something that you believe in when you are with something that you know you're right then it gives you a sense of confidence it gives you a sense of courage uh, so yes gandhiji is one of the greatest revolutionaries the world has ever seen and think about it you can also add some points from your side the reason why i'm saying to add some points from your side or the reason i'm saying that this particular topic is important is because uh, see there are high chances that you may find see gandhiji is a very important topic uh, for your examination and there are chances that you may find as a topic on this uh, this thing and just imagine if you get a statement like this one and if you have to talk about this then what you will do so think about it i have provided you some points here and uh, then it's up to you uh, moving on to another item uh, today is world toilet day it's no more a taboo topic right uh, it used to be a taboo topic and i think uh, this is one of the main reason why even today we find that there are a few people out there they have they have this bad habit of uh, 
defecating in open which is of course harmful for the whole society uh, toilet is absolutely necessary uh, for our society it's uh, one of the most important thing that we need or need of the hour is uh, we need more toilets we need uh, proper clean toilets uh, green toilets uh, that are less damaging and uh, we can create so many things out of waste isn't it there are so many countries out there they have set this example a couple of days ago bill gates uh, was addressing uh, this big meeting in china and uh, he was holding uh, you know this uh, he was he is working on this device and he's working on this mechanism where we can convert our waste into wealth and uh, that's the most important thing we are using soft water for flushing our toilet which is waste of water water is going to be one of the most it, indeed it is one of the most important uh, resource but it is going to create more troubles because of climate change and other things so we have to uh, think different and there are so many kids in our country that die every year because of diarrhea and vomiting and food poisoning and other things and you know typhoid and other diseases because of uh, this open defecation so it's not a clean India mission is is not something that belongs to Narendra Modi or it's not uh, uh, a mission that belongs to BJP party. This is a mission that belongs to all of us, right? Uh, if you are from Congress, if you are from BJP, if you are from left government, right government or li uh, leftist party, rightist party, it doesn't matter. It belongs to all of us uh, because cleanliness uh, is uh, is is healthy, right? Simple as that. Now uh, we have one more important item coming from uh, Commerce and Industry Ministry and uh, very important uh, words by our Suresh Prabhu who is Minister of Ministry of Commerce and Industry. He was addressing people who gathered in New Delhi for this strategic alliance uh, for WTO and trade remedies. India will work, he said, along with other members to amend and to make this WTO and more up to date uh, there are a few amendments uh, that are required in wto because uh, wto the way it is working it is it is bit outdated and uh, you know since mr trump came into power we have seen this sort of disruption there are so many countries out there now today they are talking about this protectionism and they are not allowing they are creating speed breakers and barriers and walls uh, for this multilateral trading system that has helped the whole world and uh, anti-globalization is going to be detrimental for all of us so that is something that is that is something that needs to be tackled as soon as possible and we have one organization that's world trade organization but world trade organization is as i told you a bit outdated the rules and regulations are a bit outdated uh, there is a sort of partiality that we find uh, there is a sort of uh, i would say some you can say you know heavy or you can say influence of uh, of developed countries uh, is quite uh, uh, quite visible in WTO and all these things uh, are clear indication that we need to amend this WTO and 98 percent of uh, global trade uh, passes through WTO and uh, WTO is the only I would say organization that we have uh, for global rules of trade between nations so it is very important that we protect we nurture and we Amend and we, uh, we I would say upgrade and re-engineer WTO. Uh, to each and every uh, citizen, as well as each and every uh, human being, whoever is listening to this lecture, I would uh, like to wish all of you uh, a very prosperous, uh, as well as a very happy uh, Milad Un Nabi or Eid. Eid Mubarak to all of you. This day is celebrated because it's the birthday of. Uh, uh, prophet uh, muhammad peace be upon him and uh, his message was peace love and uh, may god bless all of us now the last topic of the day dear friends is uh, ww1 that is world war one uh, do you know this thing that uh, millions of indian soldiers when i say millions i'm talking about some 13 lakh soldiers from our country took active part in World War One. 13 lakh soldiers and 62,000 of our soldiers, right, uh, they died in this, uh, they sacrificed their lives in World War One. So this is a very important contribution of India as far as this world peace and World War One and World War Two is concerned. This figure is just for World War One. Back in 1931, this British Raj uh, took 
commemorate the fallen soldiers uh, they built this india gate and in last 50 years you can say that we have uh, literally you know we have uh, this uh, contribution uh, of Indian soldier was uh, edited out uh, not only by our country but by uh, by the world as well not paying that much attention uh, to this contribution of Indian soldiers because we were there in this Mediterranean battles we were there in North uh, African battles we were there in Mesopotamia we were there in Eastern African portion we were there in this European portion so our soldiers were basically everywhere uh, as far as this World War I is concerned and it is important that we respect this fact and uh, the world as well uh, should understand and we, it's it's on us once we understand this thing. Now finally we can say that India has too has recognized uh, this heroic sacrifice made by our soldiers and once we accept this thing, once we realize uh, for you know for, for, for ourselves that yes our role was very important then we can uh, talk about it to other countries of the world and uh, it's going to be a big day uh, from now on it's going to be a big thing for our country because uh, you can see here uh, Vyanka Naiduji he is uh, in France in this uh, Villers uh, uh, Goulet and he was there for this inauguration of uh, this memorial that was uh, constructed by India to commemorate our Indian soldiers who fought this battle of uh, uh, Cambrai uh, some 1300 plus soldiers uh, passed away in this battle and it is one of the most important battle so India was active member at that point of time as far as world peace was concerned at present as well when it comes to uh, this United Nation peace keeping force our contribution is quite high in terms of uh, foot soldiers in terms of uh, technology in terms of soldiers and uh, the sad thing is even today at that point of time our role was quite important but then as well we are not part of United Nations Security Council so we need to amend with WTO we need to amend a UN as well we need to amend UNSC and there are other organizations you know global level organization that we need to amend and we need to see that we are part of it because historically as well as in in current era as well we are playing a very important so that's everything in today's discussion dear friends uh, you can download the pdf of today's lecture from my every page and twitter handle and uh, please make sure that you share this lecture with other students as well it is very important don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel hit the notification bell and don't forget to hit the like button and uh, pass your valuable comments uh, dear friends uh, one more thing that i would like to add is that don't forget to check out studyaq.com for our pen drive and uh, Android and tablet uh, courses. Uh, God bless you all. Enjoy your day. I'll see you tomorrow again. Till then, Jai Hind.